and welcome to another episode of Roxy's Ride and Inspire and today I would like to teach you how to do the nose pivot turn. So in small steps I would like to get you to have the confidence to be able to lift your rear wheel with the help of your front brake and ideally to lift your rear wheel to the sides or even to pivot completely on your nose so on your front wheel. Enjoy it! What's very important for you to always keep in mind is that there is kind of a pyramid or a ladder when learning skills. So you should only attempt the skill if you have the following prerequisite styles. So if you already know the following skills. These are perfect braking control without skidding wheels. So you really want to trust your front brake, trust your rear brake and know how to modulate them to reduce skidding on the trail because you will need this brake feeling for this exercise. Two is you should ideally have balance skills, so track stands also dialed, because you will come to a stop. So all the slow speed, speed skills you have will help you to learn this. And another one is also bike body separation. So being able to move on your bike and knowing where your body is and where your bike is and the awareness and also tight corners, especially slow speed skills for cornering. So everything that is involved with that. These are the skills you should already know before you start getting to this skill. Otherwise, if you're doing that, you're just jumping too fast and you won't refine those skills. You will just skip too far and maybe even hurt yourself. So practice those first and then get to this very cool but advanced exercise. And there's one more safety relevant prerequisite to this skill. I will link it below in the description. This skill is the dismount. A lot of people ask me, why do you want to dismount to the back? Because the dismount is actually that you want to do this. You want to be able to get off to the back of your bike instead of doing this. As soon as you get off to the front of your bike, and it's steep, so your bike is in steep terrain, you are really risking to hurt yourself. So you want to have the dismount to the back automatized. So you want to have it done so often that in a situation where you get scared, you will get off to the back automatically. And last but not least, before we get started, a few more security relevant facts. I'm doing this today without shin pads, but if you're new to it, then definitely wear shin pads and ideally also knee pads. Next thing, do practice with flat pedals. Very, very important to get that clean technique dialed. If you have clipless pedals usually, then swap to flats for this exercise. Although I can always advise you to use flats because you will get such a cleaner and much safer technique riding flats. The next thing is drop your saddle. If you have a cool dropper like I, I do, perfect. If not, then drop it manually so you want to have it out of the way. And of course, always, always check if you have both brakes functioning properly and that you know which is your front and which is your rear brake. With me, it's left is front and right is rear, but just check that before. So press it and you will directly see which one is your rear and which one is your front brake. Of course, tire pressure is also often a question. When I'm practicing new skills, I like to have a little bit more tire pressure than I usually run, but it's a topic that would go on for ages if I really got into it. So do, some, do uh, choose a tire pressure that suits you. Okay, now finally, let's get to practice this super cool new skill. The first exercise we're doing is we want to lift our rear wheel without pulling the front brake. So we want to load the bike, explode upwards, and in the moment we're exploding, we want to build up pressure between our handlebars and between our fit feet. So it's a wedge between those so that you don't lose the pedals. The next exercise you want to do is to trust that front brake. So now all we're doing is braking to a complete stop 
and doing the dismount as I said I've linked it down below the video and using only the front brake just so that you get confidence in using your front brake only which we will be needing for this super cool skill. Now that you've gotten used to using only your front brake without skidding and you also have your safety dismount dialed once again, you want to combine the two skills. So you want to brake only with your front wheel and you want to do the load and explode and the body wedge. So wedging between your grips and between your pedals. Go slow with this, ideally use grass or something soft and work your way up. This will definitely take a while, so take your time to practice this and you don't have to lift your rear wheel off the ground very far. It's about getting a feeling for the loading, the unweighting, the wedge and using the brake at the same time. It is a complex move. Take your time, you might take some days and then come back to this video. If you're ready this far, then now is the time for the next step. The next step is now adding in a little steering and a little lean to the inside. So something you already know from riding tight corners and everything that is in circles going tight. So you wanna steer your bike, you have your bike leaned a little bit to the inside and then you wanna do what we're doing before. So load, explode, claw the bike and you will automatically see that your rear brake will then, uh, your rear wheel will then move a little bit to the outside. As you may have seen, sometimes my front brake is kind of fully locked and sometimes I'm still modulating it. So my front wheel is still kind of rolling. As long as you're always keeping the contact to your pedals, unweighting nice, doing a nice body wedge, and you see that you've, although you're swinging to your rear wheel to the outside, your handlebars are still turning in the, to the direction where you want to be riding, then you're doing great. Once you have this step dialed, of course, you can take it to more swinging, so swinging the rear wheel even further, and that's what I'm gonna be showing you right now just so you have an idea and kind of something to work towards. You may have noticed I also have a bad side and a good side and that is completely normal. Just practice both and enjoy the journey. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Roxy's Ride and Inspire Stay at Home Skill Drill please use the hashtag on social media. And if you like my videos and would like me to continue them, then please buy me a coffee because I love coffee. And the link is also down in the description. Subscribe and see you again for my next video. Thanks everyone.